<laughs> Standing up a website can be tough, especially for designers that don't necessarily have all of the front-end experience that they'd like. I mean, the whole process can be overwhelming. You have the user experience, you have uh, the visual design process, and then you have to wade through all of the tools that it takes to actually build the website. All of these challenges that you face are amplified when you start working with clients, and we get it. We've been working with Hamilton Family Brewery on a rebrand, and while the client is amazing, their budget for web development isn't much. So we had to get creative there. We started looking for a solution where the designers, the designers on our design team, could actually build the website themselves in-house without having to ship things to a developer. So we decided to go with Webflow. Initially, working with Webflow was a little bit overwhelming. I could say the same thing for any new design tool, but honestly, the learning curve became much less steep. As we started to use Webflow to build the Hamilton site, we just fell in love with how easy to use it was. It was super down to earth. And watching the team learn, I was very impressed with the way that they took a language like CSS and then translated that into a visual tool that we designers were used to seeing. Today, I wanna to share with you the four best things that I picked up while working on the Hamilton website in Webflow. Now, keep in mind, I'm not an expert. This is just the way that I do things. But my hope here is that you'll be able to take these tips and tactics and hacks and apply them immediately to your work. And I wholeheartedly recommend that you try these things out in Webflow. Number one, creating responsive columns, truly responsive columns in Flexbox. When I was first starting out, one of the most frustrating things was working with multiple columns in a single row that responded the right way when the screen size changed. And not to mention trying to get a, a column to get, just be centered on the screen. I mean, ah, right? That's so frustrating. I, you just like center already, right? What makes this incredibly easy in Webflow is this CSS module called Flex. And Flex has been around for a couple of years. It's, it's not anything new and it's not proprietary to Webflow. However, Webflow is really the only software that you can work with Flex visually. Here's an example of a multi-column layout that uses two columns. Now, before we would calculate the parent container width and set that in pixels, and then calculate every child item width and set that in pixels. But having those set pixel widths, when you resize the screen, you'd have significant problems. So to make this truly responsive, we're just gonna set the parent container to Flex and then we're gonna set the child item widths by percentages. So now, no matter what size the screen, the containers scale to fit. Obviously, at some point, they're gonna to be too, you know, the screen's gonna to be too small to maintain that ratio, so we want those containers to stack. And getting them to stack at certain breakpoints with Flex is super, super easy. All you have to do, it's as simple as changing one setting in the Flex submenu. Oh, and bonus, centering things in Flex is as easy as Photoshop. It's as easy as Illustrator or any of those Adobe tools. It's literally, you select the parent container, you set it to Flex, and then click the center button. That's it. It's, it's that easy. After we were done with the Hamilton project, Webflow released an update that uh, you, know, you can now use CSS Grid. And CSS Grid is fantastic. It's like Flexbox taken one step further. So moving forward, I would check out CSS Grid um, and you can use both Flex and Grid together. Number two, making themed custom content types is super easy. For the Hamilton Family Brewery website, we wanted to make sure that Josh, the, the founder, and his team could add and edit and remove the beers that they do from the website without having to edit every single page. The way that you would do this in WordPress is to create a custom post type. But they're not the easiest things in the world to do. You really need a developer for this. But luckily in Webflow, this is super simple to do. Now Webflow's terminology is a little bit different. They, they call it a CMS, which stands for a content management system. And we used Webflow's CMS to create the beer section on the Hamilton website. So let me show you how easy this actually was to do. First, we created a CMS collection. Now, if you're doing this at home, collections can be literally any kind of content. I mean, blog posts, portfolio items, job postings, cat videos, whatever you want. We got creative and, and named ours 
ears. So the next step is you have to define the fields that you want the website to display. You want to define the, the, the kinds of information that the website needs to display for each individual beer. For us, this was things like the beer name, the alcohol content, uh, a short description, and things like the label color. Up until this point, all of these steps are kind of in the back end. Um, you're creating a custom content management system. Imagine trying to do this in WordPress with no development experience. I mean, you'd need to call NASA to get this done. Once we had placeholder information in the actual site, the next thing was to create the page template. So now we needed to style the page template. And luckily in Webflow, styling a template is the same way you style any other page, and it's super easy. So all the beers share this template now, and even if we wanted to make changes at this point, it's very easy to edit because you can actually see the placeholder content in the page. Once we had the look and feel where we wanted it, uh, we added the rest of our beers in the back end, and then hit publish. Now Josh can edit and remove beers at will without having to mess with the page design settings of every single page. So it's fantastic. Number three using symbols to hack page layouts. Every website has certain elements that we reuse over and over and over again. And what sucks about most page builder type applications is that you have to build every single page by itself. But the cool thing with Webflow is that you can also create symbols and symbols can be reused across many different pages, and that's a wonderful thing. And it's really easy to do. Let me show you how. So we created our footer element and a few of the call to action blocks and saved them as symbols. The great thing about these is that if you edit a symbol on one page, the changes carry through to all the other pages that the symbol is at. It's a beautiful thing. But let's take symbols one step further. Now, fair warning, I am quite sure that this is not the intended use of symbols, but it's something that saved me time. I recognized that I was reusing parts and pieces of the, the site layout, even something as simple as like a, a two column grid. And I was having to recreate these things individually. So what I did instead was I used the symbol library to kind of build this library of parts and pieces that I could pull from. Let me show you how. First step is to save an element as a symbol. And this is really easy to do. You just select these items, you right click, and then you just save it as a symbol. And now I have this custom piece saved right there in my symbol library. Now, anytime I needed that same layout or that same type of element, I just head over to my symbol menu and, and drag it onto my artboard. Then, just to make sure that I wasn't editing the rest of the site, I disassociate it from the symbol uh, because every single layout needs its own content. It needs its own text and images. So I basically use the symbol feature of Webflow like a library of page design elements. And that saved me tons of time when I was putting together the Hamilton site. Step four, creating impressive animations fast. How many times have you guys headed to awards.com and seen all of those websites with the flashy animations and just kind of wondered like how the these designers even have the time to think about that stuff? I'm all about being functional over being flashy, but these Animations, it's a great way to add some visual delight to your site. It's a great way to spice things up. And normally, animations like this take a lot of time because you have to engineer them and then communicate this to the developer. It, it takes a lot of time to get right. Not so in Webflow. With Webflow, it's really, really easy to get this look without having the time and effort that it takes normally. So currently we have all of our animations pretty finely tuned on the Hamilton website. So I'm, I'm not gonna go through every single one for you guys, but let's just say that we wanted to add a slight rotation to this stamp if the user hovered over it. Um, it's super easy to do, let's jump in. First we're gonna select our stamp image. We're gonna head over to the interactions tab or hit H on your keyboard. Then we're gonna add an element trigger of mouse hover. Once we add that trigger, we can start adding interactions and animations. So on hover, we're gonna add a custom animation. And we're gonna name that slight rotation. Once we're in this custom animation, we simply make sure that it's affecting the right trigger. We add some easing to make the animation look a little bit smoother. 
Since we're just simply adding rotation, we're just gonna rotate this thing around at the Z axis about 20 degrees. That should create a subtle rotation effect. And if we preview the site, you can see that on hover, it rotates. It's that easy. Now we just need to add an action when the user hovers off of the element. So we'd come over here, and under on hover out, again, we'd click start an animation. And this time, since we already did the work for the hover in, we can just duplicate that animation and reset the Z axis to zero. Close out of this, preview, and as you can see, on hover, the stamp rotates, and then on hover out, the stamp returns to normal. It's that easy. This is the final Hamilton Family Brewery website that we are able to make in just a few days. And the crazy thing is, there were no developers involved. We didn't have to write a single line of code. And speaking of code, if we ever wanted to hand this site off to a developer, all of the work that we did, all of the front end work that we created would be exported in clean code in just a few clicks. So it's fantastic. Everything was just a breeze to work with. And to be honest, we love working in Webflow so much that we're actually going to be migrating our future website from WordPress to Webflow. It's just that easy. So let's recap what we learned today. Number one, creating responsive columns with Flexbox. Number two, making themed custom content types. Number three, using symbols to hack page layouts. Number four, creating impressive animations fast. Using Webflow, you can actually build a website in just a few days. So I would love for you guys to go try it out. It's completely free for the first few pages, so go sign up for an account. There's a link in the description below. Go try it. By signing up for Webflow, you're actually supporting the future. Um, it's like buying us a cup of coffee or a, a beer. So try Webflow. I hope you guys got value out of this video, and if there's anything specific that you want to learn about Webflow, please let me know in the comments section below. I will be there responding to each and every single one of you for, for a day or two. Anyway, guys, I, I want you to go out there and crush it. You got this. Like, subscribe. We love you. We'll see you next time. So this is part three, take 14. But what I noticed is, there's a bug. I noticed a bug. <laughs>